Thanks to Bear Mattress for sponsoring. They are currently running their President's Day sale, so head on over to bearmattress.com forward slash five points and use code five points to get a higher discount than what is being offered on site. An NFL team's general manager might be the most important employee in the organization. It's his moves which will shape the present and future of the team and either lead them to the promised land or be scrutinized forever in the hall of why did you do that, you effing idiot. Let's focus on the dum-dums today, shall we? Every NFL team's worst GM is coming up right after this. February can be a dark month for us. No more football. We all need to hibernate, and do I have a solution for you? Bear is a premium fiberglass-free mattress designed to upgrade your sleep, improve your lifestyle and overall quality of life, and it's conveniently shipped to your door for free. What you do first is take the Bear Sleep Quiz. My results, I'm a side sleeper, so they put me in the Bear Original King Size Foam Mattress. It was so easy to set up. I've had it now for six months, and I love sleeping on it. I wake up refreshed and ready to crush the day. With Bear's sleep recovery technology, salient powered fabric helps me stay cool throughout the night. Yep, I led the dog up here, and that's good to know. Like I said before, Bear mattresses do not contain fiberglass, which can be detrimental to your health. They let you try it for 120 nights so you can make sure you love it. They also offer a lifetime warranty and financing options with flexible payment plans. I love my Bear mattress, and I think you would too. If you're looking to upgrade your sleep, head to bearmattress.com forward slash five points and use code five points to get 40% off your bear mattress plus $400 in sleep accessories for a limited time. This is higher than what is being offered on site. So check it out while you can. Again, head to bearmattress.com forward slash five points and use code five points to get 40% off your bear mattress plus $400 in sleep accessories for a limited time. Arizona Cardinals, Bill Bidwell. Not just one of the worst owners in NFL history, Bill Bidwell fancied himself as a GM. What's the worst that could happen? Bidwell, already a skin flint, was the official GM from 1952 to 1972, where he kept team salaries incredibly low. They posted a 108 and 154 record during this time and didn't make the playoffs once. Now, there are not many notable bad moves during his tenure, just that the team sucked and he eventually moved them to Arizona because the weather was nice. The Atlanta Falcons, Ken Herrick. Boy, we have a lot to choose from here, but Ken Herrick, or Herrock, was bad for a full decade. He drafted bus linebacker Andre Bruce number one overall in 1988. Now, he did draft Deion Sanders but then let him walk in free agency. He also drafted Brett Favre, but traded him for peanuts to the Packers. He also traded for Jeff George, who ended up getting released. From 1987 to 1996, the team went 57 and 102 and only made the playoffs twice. Baltimore Ravens, Eric DaCosta. It's really hard to even call Eric DaCosta a bad GM as the Ravens have had nothing but success since arriving in Baltimore. It was either him or front office legend Ozzie Newsome who won two rings in his near 20 year tenure. DaCosta is 56 and 27, drafted Lamar Jackson and has made the playoffs four out of his first five years but does not have a ring yet. Buffalo Bills, Terry Bledsoe. You ever think that you could just be a GM? Longtime sports writer Terry Bledsoe did, and oh boy, it did not go well. After a full career as a journalist, he became an assistant GM for the Giants, then landed the GM job for the Bills. The team suffered back-to-back two and 14 seasons in 1984 and 1985. You could argue that the losing seasons paved the way for Bill Polian to turn around the team by drafting Jim Kelly and a slew of other stars, but a 4-28 record is a pretty sad story for Terry. Carolina Panthers' George Seifert, hoping to cash in on the reputation of George Seifert, who coached the Niners to a championship. The Panthers made a huge mistake, making him coach and GM in 1999. Seifert, who had been retired for two years, was decent in his first two seasons, going eight and eight and seven and nine, but moves like choosing Jeff Lewis over Steve Berline and then cutting Lewis in the preseason to start 29-year-old rookie Chris Winky resulted in a one and 15 record and a pink slip. So on top of being a shitty coach, he was also a shitty GM. Damn, son. Chicago Bears, Mark 
Hatley. I know I said Ryan Pace was an awful GM, but that was before I discovered Mark Hatley. Hatley somehow seized the job in 1997 when the Bears were reeling and consequently made some awful moves. He drafted Curtis Enos in the first round at a Penn State who tore his ACL nine games into his rookie year and never was the same. Hatley overpaid for cornerback Thomas Smith, who was burnt toast. In 1999, he traded down and passed on Dante Culpepper to take Cade McNown. That didn't work. McNown was traded after a year. Hatley did make some good moves like drafting Brian Erlacher, but the results were not there on the field. 19 and 45 in his four year tenure. Cincinnati Bengals, Mike Brown. Mike Brown isn't just a shitty owner, he's also a terrible GM. If it weren't for Joe Burrow falling in his lap, Brown would have a terrible legacy. He's held the de facto title of GM since 1991. During that time, he has hired Dave Shula, who was pathetic, and kept Marvin Lewis for far too long. He turned down the Saints offer for Ricky Williams in the 1999 NFL Draft. He kept a slew of dysfunctional players to the point that the Bengals were a joke in the 2000s while running Carson Palmer out of town. All of this has resulted in a 223 and 303 record in 33 seasons. The Cleveland Browns, Sashi Brown, from one Brown to another, the Browns have had a history of bad GMs. Sashi Brown has the worst GM record in history at 1 and 31 over two seasons, including an 0 and 16 campaign. He acquired Brock Osweiler, he passed on Carson Wentz and Groper Cleveland in the draft. He signed injury prone Kenny Britt, he cut Joe. Hayden and he let Alex Mack, Mitchell Schwartz, and Tayshawn Gibson all go. Easily one of the worst GMs in history. Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones. Now Jera is like a Trevor Bauer fastball, peaking in the mid 90s. Yes, he won three rings early in his tenure, but just like Umfufu, what have you done for me lately? Jones, along with his son Steven, are the de facto GMs, and in 30 years, it's been a total shit show. Jones has whiffed badly on coaches Dave Campo, Jason Garrett and ask any Cowboys fan about Mike McCarthy. He had to be talked out of drafting Johnny Manziel. I will give him credit. He has a good scouting team, but his loyalty has hurt him, sticking with Zeke for far too long and not firing Jason Garrett. Side note, there have only been two Cowboys GMs and Tech Schramm was better than Jerry. Denver Broncos, George Peyton. The worst Broncos GM is their current one who's been there since 2021. Now look, John Elway loved picking tall white QBs and that kind of led them here, but Peyton has made some terrible moves, most notably trading a King Ransom for Broncos country. Let's ride. Broncos country, let's ride. Then extending Russell Wilson with outrageous money and then having him benched and likely having to cut him now. He also drafted Montrell Washington, who they got nothing from. He signed Randy Gregory, which was a pure waste. And of course, he hired Nathaniel Hackett in a move to try and lure Aaron Rodgers, a disaster worse than Fukushima. Detroit Lions, Matt Millen, I'll keep this brief Matt Millen isn't just the worst GM in Lions history, he's easily one of the worst of all time. He whiffed on a slew of wide receivers, drafted Joey Harrington, hired Mike Martz, Marnie Morningwig, and Steve Mariucci. Overall, his record was 31 and 81. Green Bay Packers, Bart Starr. Bart Starr was a legendary QB, winning the first two Super Bowls and creating a legacy in green and yellow. A legacy he soiled as the team's coach and GM from 1975 to 1980. Starr had no experience in either job, but took it anyways, later admitting that was a big mistake. Starr's passive demeanor didn't translate well to the sideline or the front office, and the team suffered five out of six losing seasons. His overall record being 31 and 57 as he presided over what many Packers fans called the darkest era of the team. Houston Texans, Bill O'Brien. We all know this one too. Bob was a hack when it came to being a GM. He traded DeAndre Hopkins, Brandon Cooks, and Jadavian Clowney for basically nothing. And he started Tom Savage over Deshaun Wayne Gacy. And just like Sir Mix-a-Lot now, he loved aging backs. Indianapolis Colts, Ryan Grigson. Ryan Grigson is both the Peter Principal and the Dunning-Kruger effect under a cap of greasy hair. 
Though he had a winning record and made the playoffs three out of five years, his tenure was characterized by awful moves and wasting talent outside of Andrew Luck, which was a no-brainer. His draft picks were terrible, never protecting Luck to the point that his spleen nearly exploded and Andrew Luck ended up literally hating football. His free agent signings were atrocious, adding LaRon Landry, who was on more gear than the Liver King, Darius Haywood Bay, and Ricky Jean Francois. Let's never forget the Trent Richardson trade, giving up a first round pick for a guy who had less field vision than a naked mole rat. Jacksonville Jaguars, David Caldwell. Look, Trent Balky nearly got ran out of town, but Dave Caldwell should be burned in effigy. GM of the Jags from 2013 to 2020, they were garbage every year, but that one weird season where they were minutes away from going to the Super Bowl. Caldwell let Yannick and Gakwe go for nothing. He spent money on Toby Gerhardt, Devon House, and Julius Thomas as they tried to make another run. Blake Bortles was a disaster and they overpaid for him too. Chad Henney and drafting all-time bust Luke Jokel and Justin Blackman were the chef's kiss. Kansas City Chiefs, Scott Pioli. In all fairness to Scott Pioli, one of the worst incidents in NFL history happened during his tenure. But as a GM from 2009 to 2012, he made some bad moves. He signed Matt Castle, who was trash. He hired Bill Belichick disciple Romeo Cronell as head coach. He drafted Tyson Jackson, number three overall, when he could have gotten either Brian Arakpo or Brian Cushing. And even though he was an asshole, he fired Todd Haley, who delivered Pioli his only playoff berth. Las Vegas Raiders, Reggie McKenzie. Look, you don't want to be known as the guy who traded away Khalil Mack in his prime, but that's who Reggie McKenzie is. Serving as the Raiders GM from 2012 to 2018, McKenzie also gave Derek Carr an albatross of a contract extension, hired John Gruden, and then traded away Amari Cooper. Well, at least he didn't hire Josh McDaniels. Los Angeles Chargers, Bobby Beathard. Bobby Beathard was a legendary GM for the Washington Redskins. For the Los Angeles slash San Diego Chargers, well, he's the guy who traded up for and drafted Ryan Leaf, serving as the team's GM from 1990 to 2000. Beathard made a slew of bad moves. He was urged to take Tom Brady in 2000 and took linebacker Shannon Taylor instead. He also drafted horribly and once inexplicably traded a first round pick for a second round pick. Beathard is in the Hall of Fame, but not for the work he did in San Diego. Los Angeles Rams, Bill Devaney. The Rams have had a lot of GMs, but none worse than Billy Devaney, who was the GM from 2009 to 2011 and had a record of 10 and 38. He drafted a fella by the name of Sam Bradford. He hired Steve Spagnuolo as his head coach, not defensive coordinator. Whoops. He then hired Josh McDaniels as his offensive coordinator. Whoops. In his last year, he made a lot of free agent signings to go 2-14. and 14. Stan Kroenke then used that ineptness to move the team to LA. Miami Dolphins, Randy Mueller. During Randy Mueller's time as the Dolphins GM from 2005 to 2007, he made some dumb moves. He traded for Trent Green, who played in one game. He oversaw the trade for damaged goods, Dante Culpepper. He hired Cam Cameron and then traded away Wes Welker for peanuts. His overall record was 16-32. and 32. Minnesota Vikings, Rob Brzezinski. Every Viking GM has done relatively well, even Dennis Green, and they all have over 500 records and all made the playoffs. So I had to give the title to Rob Brzezinski, who led the league in unnecessary Zs. The GM from 2002 to 2005, he is still in the front office and is known as a salary cap guru. New England Patriots, Tom Bass. It's unfair to name a GM who only had one season under his belt, but Tom Bass's 1992 season was 2-14. and 14. It was one of those weird years where the team was being sold and his QB was Hugh Millen. I don't even know who the hell that is. Bass taught clinics to help female fans understand the game of football, an attempt to get you to not have to explain the fumble touchback rule, but sadly, his mission failed. New Orleans Saints, Bill Kuharich. I don't know how to pronounce that name, and if you do, correct me in the fucking comments. From 1993 to 1999, Bill Kuharich thoroughly destroyed the Saints. He broke up the Dome Patrol, released Morton Anderson, hired Mike Ditka, and then traded an entire draft, plus a first and a third for Ricky Williams. Most of that trade was Ditka's insanity, but it resulted in the Saints going 40 and 72 during Kuharich's tenure. New York Giants' Dave Gettleman. Well, what can I say? Of course, 
is Dave Gettleman. A lot of uninformed Giants fans put a lot of blame on Jerry Reese, but he inherited a situation and didn't mess it up. Gettleman was charged with a rebuild that never happened. Let's see, Fat Dave drafted Daniel Jones, Saquon way too high, bust DeAndre Baker, and hired idiot coaches Pat Shermer and Joe Judge. He traded away Odell Beckham and drafted Kadarius Tony. Here we are, we're at the Giants. The twentieth pick. They take Kadarius Tony. I'm gonna. I'm gonna freaking. With the twentieth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Kadarius Tony, <laughs> wide receiver. <laughs> 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 He then went and signed bus Golden Tate and Kenny Galladay, who made about as many catches as married guys receive blowjobs. New York Jets, Rich Kotite. Another bad coach slash bad GM combo is Rich Kotite, who has no one to blame for his team going 4-28 from 1995 to 1996. Perhaps things would have gone better had Kotite listened to everyone on earth and drafted Warren Sapp. Instead, he took Tite and Greg Brady with their first round pick in 1995. Kotite resigned in 1996 and never coached or GM'd again. Philadelphia Eagles, Tom Modrak. The Eagles have been successful successful since 2000, going to three Super Bowls and winning one. That hurts. But before all the success was Tom Modrak, who from 1998 to 2001 oversaw a 19 and 29 record. His last draft yielded mixed results. Freddie Mitchell, Gary Scott, and Quentin Carver. He did hire Andy Reid, who ended up replacing him as GM. Yikes. Pittsburgh Steelers, Dan Rooney, another tough to find a bad one team. Owner Dan Rooney served as the de facto GM in the 1969 nice and 1970 seasons going six and 22. Rooney recognized he didn't know what he was doing and hired Dick Haley, who went on to win four championships. San Francisco 49ers, Scott McLuhan. Before John Lynch, there was Scott McLuhan, who was in name the GM, but really was more of a puppet for Jed York. From 2005 to 2009, he oversaw saw the Niners to a 31 and 49 record. However, more questionable than his moves, unfortunately, was his drinking, which ultimately led to his firing slash mutual separation with the team. Seattle Seahawks, Tom Flores. It took a while for Tom Flores to make it into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The two-time Super Bowl winning coach with the Raiders is definitely not in the Hall of Fame for his time with the Seattle Seahawks. Unfortunately, he also has nobody to blame because from 1989 to 1994, he was the coach slash GM going 37 and 59 during that stretch. Flores drafted bust Dan McGuire. Yes, Mark's brother and overall things were just sleepless in Seattle. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Mark Dominic. The Buccaneers have never had a GM with a record over 500, never. I was going to give this to John McKay who went two and 26, but he led a handcuffed expansion team in an unfair era. Also, he was pretty funny. Notre Dame beat us here in 1966, 51 to nothing in front of 87,000 people. 82,000 priests. Mark Dominic was the GM from 2009 to 2013, and his tenure was soiled when he had to cut longtime hero of the franchise, Derek Brooks, and he also hired Greg Schiano. Tennessee Titans, Rustin Weber. Who the fuck is that guy? Honestly, I've never heard of this guy. From 2012 to 2015, Rustin Webster was the Titans GM and oversaw an abysmal period in the franchise's history. He drafted Marcus Mariota, bust. He drafted Bishop Sankey, Heidi Ho, who didn't flush out. He signed a bunch of free agents that didn't work, Sean Green, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and Bernard Pollard, to name a few. And he spent a lot of draft capital on the often injured Taylor Luan. The team went 18 and 46. And finally, the Washington Commanders, Bruce Allen. Dan Snyder had famously employed talking head Vinny Serrato as his GM while puppeting from behind the scenes. Well, when reality set in that he was the problem, Snyder wanted to give the illusion that he had hired a football guy. He chose the wrong one. Bruce Allen oversaw scandal, both a cheerleader brothel and a salary cap circumvention, had a 45 and 83 record, signed Albert Hainsworth, ran off Kirk Cousins for RG3, traded up for RG3, hired Jay Gruden and held on to him for far too long, overpaid for over the hill Mike Shanahan, never found a QB and oversaw the Trent Williams debacle, all while doing it with a smug arrogance and having the gall to say these famous words. You know, the culture is actually damn good. No, Bruce, 
the culture was damn awful. Until next time, I'm Five Points Vids. <laughs>